Welcome everybody, uh, Joe with ECRM here, and I have with me today Bill Broadbent, who is the co-founder of Entosense, and we're going to talk about bugs today, uh, specifically insect-based foods, and uh, the value to the planet, uh, to consumers as far as nutrition, and why retailers should be getting in the game. So, Bill, Thank you so much for joining us. And, and to start off, can you give us a little overview of your company and what you guys do? Sure. Well, first, thanks, Joe, for having me on. <laughs> um, basically, Entosense started, uh, we're in our sixth year, over five years ago, and we sell edible insects. And we sell everything from uh, roasted crickets to Manchurian scorpions. Um, right now, one of the hot products we have is gourmet red and black ants. Uh, they're, they're getting more and more popular as, as the time goes on. So um, we sell both wholesale um, food service. We sell to Cisco, uh, you know, and, and quite a few different chefs and restaurants, places like that. And then we also sell retail. We sell wholesale to um, quite a few, every, everything from beef jerky outlets to uh, Cost Plus and places like that. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Excellent. Actually, I'm going to be uh, uh, doing an interview with Cisco. They were just at our food service session. So uh, oh. I, I definitely want to bring that up. And, and uh, you know, so what type of, I mean, you, you have a lot of different types of insects. How many different types of insects? And, and in what formats? Are they, uh, you know, whole insects? Are they components of other foods? Or, you know, how, how are they sold? Yeah, we have both, um, both the whole insects and then also powder. And there, it pretty much ranges um, up to 30 or 40 different kinds of insects, depending on the time. Now, because of COVID-19, um, a lot of our places aren't shipping or, you know, they've reduced their staff so much that just not getting the supply we need. Uh, we're having to, for example, crickets, which is one of cr crickets and chapelinas, which are roasted grasshoppers. There are two... Um, biggest products right now and we're trying to buy hundreds of kilos of crickets at a time and it's tough to get enough um the chapelinas are traditional in mexico so we can only buy from mexico um and we generally buy out everything we can get it's uh it's wow interesting but as, as you were asking though it, it ranges from the crickets and mealworms which people are used to mm -hmm. and it's all the way to we have uh, uh asian forest scorpions or emperor scorpions and they're these big black scorpions, five, six, seven inches long. Um, more popular though is the Manchurian scorpions, which is small ones. Uh, we have quite a few um, tarantulas, giant water bugs, um, giant June bugs. <laughs> I mean, it is, it, it, it runs the range. And it's interesting because, you know, we always say um, around the world, billions of people eat insects all the time. Mm -hmm. It's only a few places that don't, and it's basically Europe, us, Australia. And um, when I say us, that's Canada and the United States, because in Mexico, there's almost 300 different insects that are, are eaten, 200 to 300. Um, around the world, you know, billions of people eat insects every day. It's, we're the ones that have the problem with it. The yuck <laughs> factor that you talked about. Yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, it's a definite mental challenge. But one of the interesting things is once you get over it, it's pretty wild. I mean, I remember how hard it was to eat my first cricket, and it wasn't easy. But once I did, now I see all sorts of things. I, I you know, I just saw this um, uh, silkworm ginger soup that looked fantastic, and I no longer see them as insects. I see them as just another ingredient. And I think that's one of the keys right now is we need to get chefs that are creating meals with all these different insects. There's about, you know, 2,000 insects that are eaten around the world, and everyone tastes different. <laughs> And, you know, I, I have actually ate um, dried crickets and dried mealworms. And basically, you know, they really, they weren't that bad. They had a mouthfeel of kind of, you know, when you shell a peanut and you have the mm -hmm. red thing that goes around the peanut, that's kind mm -hmm. of what it felt like in, as far as texture. But the taste was just whatever they were flavored with. So it really wasn't that bad. I don't know if I'm quite ready to like eat a live cricket or, you know, that's well, a big step. <laughs> I've got to say there, there's um, Drew and his animals too, is a guy, you know, he, a company this guy has uh, here in Lewiston and he dared my son and I to eat a live um, or eat live superworms. And we figured, well, you know, we're in the business. We ought to try them live. 
And so I, I tried a live superworm, and you know, I always I have to say that it kind of tastes a lot like a roasted superworm, except for one thing, and that's the squirt. Yeah. So after that, I said no more eating uh, anything that's live like that. Uh-huh. Um, so mo- most of what we eat, you know, it's, it's either roasted, it's made into powder, or they're mixed in. Like I said, the, the best is when they're in an ingredient in another dish. Yeah, that um, seems to be an easy segue, kind of getting yeah. the mainstream consumer into it. Yeah, how, yeah. How did you get into it? How did, you know, what, what gave you the thought, hey, I want to start selling bugs for food? Yeah, it surprised me as much as uh, everybody else, in a sense. We had um, just moved to Maine, um, quite, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, we lived in New Mexico, um, and my parents and my sister and brother-in-law are here. And we were in a beautiful area in New Mexico, mountain area in New Mexico. And um, the problem was it didn't have great schools. And my son was just getting to kindergarten age. Um, he didn't like kindergarten. What kid doesn't like school? So we decided to move. And my family basically said, you got to come back to Maine. You know, so we did. And, I, and I joke that, you know, we sure could have done worse. Anyway, we got here. And one of the, so, you know, we, we had new things going on and my son had asked during a drive why don't we eat bugs and i gave him what he calls a dad answer and you know so he kept kept looking into it and coming back and say hey did you know and he talked about the health benefits he talked about um you know the environmental benefits and even the humanity and and that sort of sort of thing and he convinced himself so much that he's now a, a vegan uh he or ento vegan he eats bugs but you know um, he doesn't eat meat that much. I still eat meat. Um, but as he kept coming back, it got more and more interesting. And so kind of just for fun, we put up a website and people started saying, hey, where can we get the products? And the only products we even knew about at the time, there were just a few. Um, uh, Shark Tank had uh, Chipul, <laughs> the Chipul bar made out of cricket powder. And Mark Cuban invested in it. And then he also invested in uh, Chirps, which is another company that came out with uh, chips with cricket powder in it. And so um, we started with a few products like that, but, you know, they were saying, where can we get the dried crickets or the roasted crickets? Where can we get chapolinas? Where we can get ants? And we started thinking about making it a business. My sister at the time was, um, she was the FX director for Condé Nast, and she was also interested in doing something different. So it was um, actually July of uh, 2015 that we incorporated uh, EntoSense LLC and started the business. And it started out with just my sister and I. And prior to COVID, um, we had uh, six or seven employees, depending on how much was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's, it's been reduced and a lot of people are working at home. But it's starting to pick up right now. Uh, but that's pretty much, you know, how it all started with my son saying, why don't we eat insects? It just made a lot of sense. And we started in the barn, you know, next to my house. And now we're in a mill with uh, 7,000, or actually 10,000 square feet. We're using seven of it. Um, and it's great. I mean, we have a, a big warehouse of stuff and we ship all over the world. Wow. So what's 100 kilograms of crickets look like size-wise? How big a box is that? They come on a pallet, and it's it's probably about three feet high. Um, when we get 500 pounds, it's about as tall as I am. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of crickets. Yeah, it's a lot of crickets. We go through a lot of crickets. Um, we have a product called Mini Kickers, and it's a tube of about 100 flavored crickets, and they run from uh, cotton candy, Italian uh, herb. We've got um, jalapeno, garlic. It's white cheddar <laughs> sounds interesting sounds interesting so uh, now the consumers right the ones who are buying this these products that are into it you know tell me a little bit about the insect eating consumer who are they what you know why are they eating them what types of products are popular with them so th- there's definitely two different types of people buying them, and, and one has always bought them, and that's the novelty factor. You know, somebody cares, somebody to eat a bug. Uh, we like to joke that the difference now is that when somebody says, hey, you know, Johnny ate a bug, ooh, Johnny goes, yeah, but did you know? And he talks about the health benefits and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, we sell our Manchurian scorpions for scorpion shots and flaming scorpion cocktails. And the people buying those obviously aren't buying them so that they can get the nutritional benefit of the scorpion. <laughs> but um, a lot of people that are buying the other insects are both adventurous people who just want to try something new, but also people that are health oriented because it does. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's like little vitamin pills. And there's lots of reasons to eat it, especially if you're a vegetarian. Um, it's a real animal protein. It has all the uh, essential amino acids. It's high in antioxidants. It's a, oh, one big reason a lot of people have been buying it is prebiotic fiber. Uh, that's hard for us to get. And the chitin, which is the exoskeleton of, of the different insects, um, any of them with a hard shell, is a prebiotic fiber. And so if you're taking a lot of probiotics, it only makes sense to add the prebiotics, which Prebiotics are nutrition for probiotics. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, it's high in B12. It's got the omega-3-6 uh, combination, you know, the, the good fats, um, all sorts of stuff. More calcium than milk, more iron than spinach. And depending on the insect, it goes on and on. There are also sustainability benefits, too. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's another reason when we spoke earlier uh, that people are interested in it. Yeah, and, and, and to just end, end up with the health thing, I, I, I kind of joke with people that maybe insects are what's missing from our diets because, you know, it, it's safety tested for 200,000 years. <laughs> yeah. um, we've been eating them since the beginning of time, and now we don't. And so, you know, after centuries and centuries of our body being used to eating the, this one type of food, we now disparage this entire food group. We look at it as, you know, as food of the poor, and this is kind of a side effect too, is that, Traditionally, all over the world, people um, that have eaten traditional foods that included insects are moving away from that. And it's because we look down on it. We say, hey, it's survival food or it's the food of the poor. So the younger generations want to eat steak because we revere steak, but we revile insects. And um, it's, it's important for us to kind of reverse that trend because this is a food source that almost anybody anywhere can, can grow. You can grow crickets on, you know, the stuff you throw away after your meals, you know, food waste. Um, there's cricket farms, you know, that, that or, or there's actually black soldier fly is a big one, can live off of restaurant grocery store waste. So it, it, it was a great cycle there too, because their, uh, their poop or their frass, as it's called, is also a great fertilizer. So there, there's this resource, this insect resource that we totally ignore. And again, you know, 80% of the world does not, but we do. Um, and again, when you get to the sustainability factor, it, there's a million reasons why it's, it's so much better. Um, we know right now that we're having a big problem with, you know, beef and being able to, to keep going. I, I like to point out that by the time my kids are my age, there's going to be half again as many people on the planet. And we can't, we just simply can't have 50% growth or 100% growth because it's getting more popular by the day for beef. Um, so crickets can be grown not only in your home, but they can be grown in an old warehouse in the middle of an urban environment. Um, and, and not only that, they like that environment. Uh, crickets love to be, you know, to get close together in a, in a um, I was going to say swarm, but a herd. <laughs> we, we joke, some of the cricket farms, like there's one in Canada that says they have over 100 million head of cricket, one of the biggest ranches in the world. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, they're, they're relatively easy to grow. They can be grown on almost anything, um, and they can, can be grown almost anywhere. They can be grown vertically. You know, they can be grown in, in your own home. So I think there's, I mean, that's very interesting. And I know some, I know a couple of vegans who actually give insect protein a pass, and they'll eat it just because they're, uh, what, what is it called, moral or ethical vegans, where, you know, the net harm to animals is less, or to life is less by harvesting crickets than, say, if you clear the farm to grow organic produce. And, uh, you know, so I found that kind of interesting. Can you talk a little bit about how they're harvested and what's required and, and you know, from a sustainability standpoint? And, and, also, from a um, animal welfare, uh, you know, you told me about how they were put down, and it's you know, it, it seems to be a very um, 
easy, I guess would be the word to say, or not easy, but, you know, painless for them. Yeah, and it's relatively natural. Um, basically, crickets, you know, live their whole life. Um, it's a six to eight week lifespan. And when they get, and, and of course, you want to raise them until they're as large as possible. So at the end of their lifespan, um, they're, they're, put in a, they're put in a refrigerator or freezer and the temperature's dropped. And that's like winter coming on. Um, you know, cr crickets don't survive the winter, their eggs do. And so this is just like winter coming on and they, you know, they go into a hibernation state or a bromating state. I, I'm not sure, you know, it's the same sort of thing. Um, and then they end up dying because the temperature drops low enough. Um, and at that point, you know, they wash them and, and either roast them or roast them and, and turn them into powder. Um, right now for most cricket farms, powder is the big product because, you know, you can add powder to, chocolate chip cookies and now all of a sudden you have a high protein cookie with you know b12 omega-3 and 6 you know um all, all sorts of things and and if if you add it to powder and, and people hear cricket flour and cricket powder cricket flour is basically regular baking flour with 20 to 25 percent cricket powder uh, but if you do 20 percent you're barely going to even know it's there um you're not going to taste it you know chocolate chip cookies are going to still taste as good as they always have <laughs> but you're getting all those benefits. So um, now right. what about the retailers? You do deal with uh, some retailers and, and food service operations. The ones who are starting to get involved, what's their reasoning behind it and what types of products are they selling? Well, with some of them, it's because they've, they've gotten requests. Um, it's not too uncommon for a store and call and say, hey, you know, after the third or fourth, fourth person asked if we carry this. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we beef jerky stores obviously are natural because they carry all these different kinds of meat. And I, 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 people, some people like to call this meat and that, but you know, those are the people that like to try new and, and varied things. Um, but we get into the, a lot of the mainstream stores too. Um, there's a lot of the health food stores, especially with the protein bars, they're starting to carry the protein bars. Um, our, one of our big products, again, is the mini kickers. They're tubes of crickets and they let people try you know, different flavors and to see, see what they taste like. And our reorder rate on those is fantastic. I mean, we're, we get, get into one store and every other week we're starting to get reorders. Um, so yeah, and, and I, I think right now the direction we need to go is to get more products that incorporate insects. So kind of like the energy bars, you know, you have no idea you're eating a cricket or a cricket pop. It just tastes like a good tasting energy bar. Chirps, chips, you know, they taste great. You could eat them all day and never even know if you didn't tell somebody. So um, I think that's a direction we need to go. We need to get some more, you know, food oriented things in there that isn't so obviously a cricket. Sometimes I think when people try, you know, just one cricket, um, they, they, they aren't as uh, initiated as they should be because it's crunchy and, you know, yeah, it kind of sticks in your teeth a little bit. But uh, if they try, like I said, the, uh, you know, garlic silkworm soup or ginger silkworm soup, um, it would give them a whole different experience because it tastes great. The black ants are really big because they have a citrus taste. Very few people don't like that taste. So a lot of chefs will replace lemon and lime with black ants. Um, and they like the ants for two reasons. One, black is kind of an in color right now for food ingredients. And the second one is that they're small enough, unless somebody says, hey, did you know that's an ant? People don't really notice it. They taste it and they say, hey, what is that? They have a real light crunch. And uh, again, they taste kind of lemon lime and mm -hmm. neat little bursts of flavor when you eat one little ant. I mean, 10 ants on somebody's dish and they're gonna, they're gonna have a new experience. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No doubt. So for the retailers and the food service operations that are currently selling these things, how are they marketing and merchandising them to kind of get more people to uh, try them? Yeah, well, with the retailers, we have our own um, displays. Uh, for mini kickers have a two tier shelf um, and it holds 90 or holds 60 and when we ship 90 at a, you know, for a new order. Um, we have what's called Little Bugs, also goes on a retail display, Little Wire Rack, and, you know, it's it's a single scorpion or a small amount of crickets or a little, you know, bunch of ants. Um, as, as far as, you know, the, the food service companies, well, they, we sell them bulk, you know, they get them in, in big grip jars or, or bags, that sort of thing. And then 
uh, they do their own. Um, Bush Gardens and uh, SeaWorld have done some great things with their dinners and, you know, they're, they're artistic as far as when they serve them. Uh, they look great. I think, you know, what you talked about before as far as it's kind of easing them in. I mean, obviously in the retail setting, it sounds like kind of an impulse buy, you know, it's a impulse type of displays, but uh, on the, the supplement side, you know, nutritional supplements, there it could be a little more overt where you're talking about people are interested in a function of it as well. So all of those nutritious properties kind of lend themselves to that. Yeah, we, we actually, and we're, we're getting further into the powders. We're going to soon have, um, because there's a difference, but we'll have black ant powder, scorpion powder, cricket powder, grasshopper powder, things like that. Um, because of that, because people are, we, we have people that buy, you know, a whole bunch of, um, you, you know, a, a Italian lasagna uh, mini kickers, and they have a tube a day. And oh. that's their prebiotic fiber, that's their omegas, that's, you know, uh, antioxidants. So it is getting to that point. We have to um, start having some larger containers so people can, can buy, you know, a pound of, of white cheddar crickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned, I mean, some of them are also a really good um, opportunity to add a premium price to these things. Like you mentioned the drinks with the scorpions um, oh, yeah. and, and how much they sell for. Yes. So with a lot of our products, you know, in retail stores, it's their normal markup. But when it comes to some of the specialty items, um, especially like, for example, the ants, the ants are, I think it's $258 a pound, which sounds like a lot. But that's a ton of ants. And like I said, you can just sprinkle 10 on somebody's salad and they'll, they'll taste it. So your margin on that's incredible. Maybe $250 for a pound, but I mean, it's got to be a thousand plates that it will, it will serve. And then you were mentioning the scorpions. Um, the uh, scorpion shots and the flaming scorpion cocktails, um, they're a lot of fun. And, and what happens there is that the, the bar buys them for a buck and they sell them for five. So if somebody wants to add a scorpion to their drink, it's just five bucks extra. And they get a lot more than just a scorpion because these bartenders are fantastic. You know, scorpions glow in the dark and bars are kind of dark. So the bartender will first bring the scorpion over in their hand and show it with a black light. And the black light will make it glow and, you know, the people immediately around will go, wow, and then other people will notice. And by the time they get around to putting it on to the cocktail and lighting it on fire, they've got a crowd. <laughs> Talk about an Instagrammable opportunity. Oh, and that's one of the cool things, yeah. There's a number of things. And they've been really creative with marketing. But first of all, nobody eats a scorpion and doesn't tell everybody they know. I mean, they've got to post it online. It's going to be the talk when they get to work the next morning. Of course, no one goes to work anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean you know, they, they talk a lot. And then we've had other places um, that have like partnered up with other, like a retailer that will partner with a bar and have a scorpion night or they'll partner with a restaurant. And, you know, if, if they give them, $30 worth of ants. Um, they're going to have ants on the menu and talk about it as a cross promotion. So it's, it's very inexpensive. We've also had a number of places that have bought them and, and donated to schools. You know, they'll send a few tubes of crickets to a, to a classroom with their kids. And then the kids are telling their parents and, you know, so it, it's like modern day word of mouth. As soon as somebody for their very first time, I always say, you know, the, the hardest cricket or the hardest insect to eat is your first one. <laughs> But what a great experience. And, you know, the more it's caught on camera, the more it gets out there. And yep. I filmed myself eating the crickets. And, and then I did another video more recently where I was eating chocolate-covered dried, you know, roasted crickets, which oh, yeah. just tasted like chocolate. So, I mean, it, it was no, no big deal. And so, you know, based on what you were saying, it sounds like, you know, a kind of an the, the novelty factor and the health factor can kind of help get that original trial and then spur on, the, you know, the, the repeat purchases. Right, right. And, and, and I think as people will get used to it, as they start seeing it here and there, they're going to start playing with it themselves. And that's kind of the key. We always say, it, you know, it's the chefs are going to be the key to all this because people like the taste, they're going to eat more. And especially when you start, you know, thinking about the health benefits um, it's very hard for a lot of people to get those prebiotics, you know, the omega-6, and it's a balance, omega-3-6. Um, those are hard to get. 
And here it is right here in something we've been eating since the beginning of time. You know, like I said, it's, it's part of our, our diet up until the last 500 years. Yep. Yep. And what about for a retailer, a, a buyer who's considering kind of getting into the insect game? What would you recommend as a good path for them to start on? Well, of course, I like promoting our products, but at the same time, you know, the tubes of crickets do fantastic. Little bugs, which are little um, samples of different kinds of bugs, that does well too. If they want to combine that with the chips and, and the energy bars, I think that's fantastic because that's getting people, you know, different directions. Um, we sell really well right next to the energy bars and the chips and things like that. And I think uh, the social media aspect is a good way to kind of, you know, maybe to get every, their customers involved in social media in promoting that fact. That would be helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, in a sense, just ask for the videos because people love to send them in. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah. That's very cool. I'll have to do some. I'll have to pick up some of your stuff and do a little tasting. <laughs> yeah, I'll send, I'll send you some samples, yeah. I'd love to check it out, and uh, of course, I'm, I'm going to do that on video and, and uh, show that off. But so the ick factor, the the yuck factor, that you know, one thing that you pointed out on your blog that kind of really resonated with me because it was the honey thing, where you know right. we all love honey. There's not one person that doesn't love the taste of honey, but they don't realize they're eating bee vomit, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's true. And then also, um, we heard about the murder hornets, you know, the big bad murder hornets. We actually had some murder hornets. They sold out like, you know, in no time at all at that point when that all that happened. But they came from Japan. And in Japan, they're considered a delicacy. Hmm. Um, we, we had hornet tsukunami, if I can say that right. But it was hornets that had been marinated. And again, um, one little jar, I, I literally eight or 10 hornets was about 50 bucks. Wow, and they're pretty big too, so there's a lot of nutrition in there, right? No, the mur th those were a different type of hornet. The murder hornets that we had had been dried, and so when we ate them, uh, they tasted like popcorn without butter. I mean, there wasn't much taste to them at all, and they were just crunchy and kind of had that same um, chewiness that popcorn has. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, yeah, so that's reminded me of the crickets, the, the uh, roasted crickets that I ate. It's kind of dry. It didn't, you know, felt like a snack. It didn't feel like uh, 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 I was eating a bug. So, so looking forward, where do you see this segment headed? I mean, my guess would be, you know, like with the millennials and, and their bigger focus on health and the environment, they would be kind of, you know, a good segment to grow in. But, where, you know, where do you, when do you see this segment kind of going mainstream? We found that basically, you know, if they're under 18, it's a 70 or 80% chance that they're going to have no problem eating the insects. I mean, they may joke about it, but they'll put them right in their mouth and eat them. If they're under 40, it's, it's around 40 or 50%. But from 40 and over, it's a tough crowd. I mean, that's my age. You know, it's, it's our, our group has a tougher time eating something that they haven't eaten in their whole life. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the, the newer generations, you know, under 40. They understand the health benefits. They also are looking for alternatives. You know, I think they're probably a little bit afraid of the future <laughs> for yeah. good reason. Um, and they're saying we have to start finding some alternatives. And, you know, we, we, our company name is EntoSense because eating edible insects makes sense. And, uh, y you know, when we first started, we got edibleinsects.com without having to pay, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. And now it's hard to get those domains. So I know, um, you know, again, there was almost no cricket farms and there's a couple dozen now people commercially growing crickets. Um, the ex-CEO of um, Cisco Systems, not Cisco uh, Food Service Company, but Cisco Systems um, only a few years ago invested in a robotic 20,000 square foot plant in Texas. And he and his crew, um, Aspire, are opening up, I think it's a 40,000 square foot, maybe another 20,000, I'm not sure, but in London, because Europe's ahead of us. You know, this is another thing. Uh, Salisbury, which is a chain of grocery stores in Europe, carry bug burgers. 
they carry, um, you know, fake meat made out of insects. They're ahead of us, and and you know that's Europe. We're supposed to be the United States ahead of everything, but we're we're behind them. We're behind Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, cricket powder is carried in uh, Loblaws, which is the largest grocery store chain in Canada. So you know we're we're trailing, but we're getting there. And I do think that it's happening fairly quickly. Again, you know, five years ago there were almost no cricket farms. Now there's cricket farms in most states. Um, maybe not most days, but I think there's probably 20 or 30 out there now that have started growing commercially. And we're going to start doing it. Um, you know, again, the European Union has a lot of um, things going on with, with research and grants and that sort of thing. And we're just starting to get there. Our, our government's just starting to get to the point where they have to look into a little bit more. But it's mostly private enterprise. And, and because of that, again, there's, you know, uh, 60, 000, I think it's 60,000 square feet of, of farming in, uh, outside of Toronto with one, one company up there. Um, you know, so it's, it's just going to keep going. And, and it's kind of on fire right now as far as that goes. I should also mention feed. Um, I'll do a quick thing here on, on feed. Insects were just made illegal to, to feed commercial uh, salmonoids, salmon and trout, insects which is kind of odd since insects are the natural food of salmon and trout but it had been illegal to use that as feed so now there are companies that are gathering restaurant and grocery store waste uh, stuff that normally goes to our landfills and creates all sorts of bad greenhouse gases and stuff like that well they're using that waste to grow black soldier fly larva and then the black soldier fly larva is replacing fish food, uh, fish feed And that is normally, you know, mackerel and herring and sardines, stuff like that, that is already being overfished and is already a problem. They use that for fish feed. Well, now they can use the black soldier fly larva. It's high protein. um, You know, it can be as fresh as being alive when they feed them. I'm not even sure that's legal, but I'm just saying it's possible. Uh It's great that it's replacing the fish feed. So edible insects on that side, both food and feed, are becoming more and more popular. And like I would say, it only makes sense that we do it. It's just because of these unwarranted cultural fears that we have that we don't have the mental capacity to overcome the ick factor. Yep, yep. And it sounds like a great opportunity. Uh, so, so for retail buyers or food service buyers that are interested uh, in reaching out to you to learn more or, or maybe to you know, source from you, how can they reach you? What's the best way of reaching you? Yeah, well, we have our consumer site is edibleinsects.com and info at edibleinsects.com's email. And then our wholesale site is wholesaleedibleinsects.com. And that's where uh, retailers and food service people can go. They'll see our displays. They'll also see the bulk packaging and that sort of thing. And our overall company website is entosense.com. And that just kind of talks about who we are, what we do, and, and lists our other websites. Excellent. I'll make sure to have all those links in the post as well. Oh, that's great. So, Bill, thank you so much. This has been very informative. And, uh, you know, I agree. I do think that this definitely has a future. And uh, I look forward to, you know, staying in touch with you and and continuing to learn and trying out some of those samples. I will put that on video, too. (laughs) That's great. We'll send you some good ones. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me.